Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Vertimax Vibe Podcast. My name is Al Merez. I want to be your host today. Being joined here today by Brett Keen, one of the key members of Team Vertimax. Deals with a lot of our clients and coaches and trainers. So, um, you know, he has a lot of conversations with these guys about their business and growing their business. And so I thought it'd be great to bring him on today because today we're going to be talking about five ideas or ways that um, a sports performance facility or a sports, sports performance business can grow. You know, obviously, um, any business is always looking for ways to improve especially in, in the, the gym world or the you know sports performance facility world. You know, they're always looking for ways to, to grow their revenue. So we're going to throw out some ideas uh, that may be able to help you if, if that's what, what your operation is. So, Brett, let's start off with the first one, and that's just kind of like grow outside of your fall, four walls. Yeah, so um, basically what that means is, um, you know, if you're a gym owner, you own a facility, you can't just, you know, stay in your one spot and expect clients to come to you. You got to go out there and, you know, you got to go visit the schools. Um, you got to visit people in the community. Um, you got to make yourself available, let people know what you have. Also, look for to help people. Um, so growing outside your walls um, kind of leads into, you know, like really what we're talking about with when we mean to get involved with the community. So a lot of the times what I've seen sports performance um um, owners do what they'll do is you know look for the health and fitness you know maybe um, clinics or events in the area maybe set up a table maybe set up a booth where you're out there you're communicating with the family you're networking uh, you're meeting with people um, you know if depending on what your clientele is um, you know if it's sports if it's the youth athletes you may have to go to the high schools um, and talk yeah. to them um, and sometimes that takes you know offering free training you know at that point um, to some of the school athletes or to the school letting them know what you have um, or even running a free clinic at your facility um, for your for your youth to come in and start training um, is one of the really good ideas Absolutely. that I've seen. Yeah, that past. kind of like that guerrilla marketing where you have yep. to get out there, right? It's yep. just, oh yeah. You may have heard, you know, if you build it, they will come, but right. that, not, that doesn't usually work. No, right? definitely not. So you have to get out there, you know, and and like Brett said, mentioning like going to high schools or going to these these other uh, organizations or travel mm -hmm. ball teams where. You're going and you're warming them up, or you're yeah. doing a speed session, or you're just getting your name out there and you're connecting dots, and you're just trying to find ways to to meet those those coaches and, and people that are out there. Yep. Um, you know, speaking at, at places, you all have a specialty, right? You're trained in mm -hmm. in helping athletes perform better, and there's lots of organizations that would love to hear from you. So, so being able to to get out there and um, and do that stuff is a great way. Yeah, absolutely. And you need just you need to also. When you do have a business set up for being a sports performance study, you need to identify, you know, your key clients that you have, um, what made them come to you, see what worked best with them, see if you can grow on that, see what they like. Um, you always want to connect with your current clientele as well you have, and just and then once you to find out, um, who, you know, who you really want to coach and who you really want to tailor to, um, you need to just kind of just kind of go from there, and that's when you can kind of open it up to, um, say, for instance, if. Um, you come from baseball background and you really want to, you know, train sports performance for, you know, specific base for baseball athletes. Maybe you reach out to the local baseball teams and, you know, provide your services. Yeah, that's a great, um, a great thing to keep in mind because everybody wants to try to be everything to everyone. For sure. Yeah. And so if you do have, say, baseball or football or whatever you're kind of like proficient in, kind of focus on those and bring mm -hmm. them in because, uh, again, if you try to... to to please everybody, you're gonna kind of like not please anybody. That's yeah, what he's kind of like yeah. say, right? So, yeah, starting off if it's younger baseball, if it's older football, is it college athletes? You know, um, kind of identify who you want your clientele to be, and then and then make sure that that's what you're keeping in mind, mm -hmm. and answer the question like, am I doing what I need to be doing to solve their problems to help them specifically? Is uh, you know, that, that's that'll come through in your marketing, and that'll come through in your conversations that you have with the with the parents and the athletes. Yeah, absolutely. And I've seen in the past, I've seen, you know, especially the guys that just started out and maybe have a f smaller facility, they're trying to build their resume up and trying to get clientele. I've seen a lot, you know, go out to schools and like some of like the smaller colleges, I know like the bigger college have like a strength and conditioning program coach, but some of these smaller schools don't have that. Mm. Um, so I've seen, you know, these facility owners that, you know, offer their services to the administrator, you know, maybe, you know, start off free or start doing some trial, but then they've got their head, you know, they've got their foot in the door and 
the athletes will let them know if they like it. And a lot of the athletes liked working with that coach. Coach worked with them. And then, you know, when those athletes leave, um, they come to your facility. Or, you know, the administrators at the school see you're doing a good job. Um, you know, your resume is going to build up. You know, it's about what you put into it and who you reach out to and the work, you know, that the clients are going to love. Yeah, especially as a you know, high school athlete, you only have a certain number of hours that you can be, yep. you know, with those athletes as a coach with those mm-hmm. athletes. So you may not get as much time doing strength and conditioning with those athletes that you would want to. So, yep. you know, if somebody owns a facility, then you could always say, sort of recommend they go train there on their own time. You know, if you're doing a good job with those athletes, if you're training, say, the basketball team, the volleyball team may hear about it or see what you're doing. And the track athletes may. Yeah. And so then you can continue, you know, yeah, kind of well, build your clientele that yeah, way. Yeah, I had a coach who literally went to a high school, you know, obviously built that trust and that relationship with that athletic director. But then he started offering, you know, monthly, like, free speed clinics at mm-hmm. the high school. And kids would show up, and they would show up for free. It's only an hour long. But, you know, that gives you a chance to connect with the students, connect with the coaches of the sport, connect with the parents, um, that just, you know, it's all part of networking and sales and growing your business. That's the key. Networking, you know, sports performance business uh, isn't necessarily a training business. It's more right. of like a yeah. sales business. Because, it is. And unfortunately, you know, you know and as most trainers know, they don't get taught that in college. You know, they get yeah. their four-year physical education degree, you know, or a physio degree, but they don't teach you about growing a business yeah. or starting a business. So, you know, there's a lot of things you got to do out there. And I know a lot kind of shell shocked when they get into it but you know for sure. just whatever you can do you learn quick it's all you know networking and networking selling and, yourself for sure and and selling yourself and then you know the last kind of thing is hitting on is like a, appealing to the parents right yeah absolutely if you have a sports performance you know and you're catering towards youth you want to make sure that that com- parent you know feels comfortable you know whether they're dropping off their kid for an hour or letting you you know train them for an hour um, you got to appeal to the parents. So, you know, you got to have, you know, you don't have to have the top of the notch facility for that, but it's all about, you know, your presence, your communication, how you're working with the athletes. But yes, you definitely got to have that communication and that relationship with the parents um, for sure. to start that. Because a lot of the time they're going to be your word of mouth and they could make or break you, you know, yeah. for sure, if it, things aren't going right. Happy clients are your number one sales yeah, tool, exactly. right? Because yeah, they're absolutely. talking to all the other parents. And, and specifically, with parents, like, not only. Are they paying for the athletes? So you right. want to make sure that you have them bought in. But a big part of these businesses um, is like adult training too, mm-hmm. and, and right. personal oh, yeah. training mm-hmm. and private lessons and stuff like that. Where um, you know boot camp classes and stuff. Because mm-hmm. if you own your own facility, um, you know you're paying for that 24 hours a day, even though you might only be training athletes mm-hmm. after school. Right. You know you still have to do stuff during the day, and so uh, those parents that you're talking to. You know, it could be a source of revenue if you ended up wanting to start one of those kinds of classes. Yeah, absolutely. So hopefully that was helpful. You know, those are some some ideas that's coming straight from from Brett and our team of, of you know, people that they're talking to, trainers and coaches that they talk to. And this is kind of like some of the big things that they're hearing and, and some suggestions that they have for you. If you're considering opening up a sports performance facility or if you have one, um, if you have any ideas or any ways that, that you can uh, recommend us to, to push some information off, Always, uh, you know, leave us some information. Um, if you find us on social, if you want to put some information here in the blog here that, that, you're, that you're watching or the YouTube channel that you might be watching, if you want to add some comments, you know, we're always quick to, to answer and, and to connect with you. So we're always looking for that. All right, well, I really appreciate you all sticking around and, and listening to us today. Brett, appreciate you coming in, sharing some of your yes, information. Sir, uh, go, have a great day.